Um, hi there. I, I guess you can say that I'm writing this as a cautionary tale for those who plan on studying abroad in the future. No, I, I don't really mean to discourage you from going in the first place. I just kind of want you to be aware of this, so... So that something like this doesn't happen to you too. So, you know, I'm kind of being ominous, so I guess I should explain just a little bit. Um, last summer, I was selected to participate in a study abroad program that would be centered in Rome for about several months. Like anyone would be, I was elated. I'd never been out of the States before, so this is going to be a real adventure for me, and one of my first. In the weeks that, well, followed, I happily packed everything and anything I could fit into my suitcase, and to be honest, I'll be the first to admit that I probably way overpacked for this trip. I was nervous about leaving my parents' house for the first time, but on the upside, I was also excited for the newfound freedom I would have while in Europe. Before I knew it, my parents were dropping me off at the airport, and I was boarding a 19-hour flight to Rome. Despite being long and tedious, the flight wasn't really all that bad. When I exited the airport, I was greeted by the program supervisor and several other students who I'd be studying with. They were all about the same age, and they looked just as excited as I am, except for a few outliers, as to be expected. From then on, we went to our mandatory orientation meeting, and afterwards we picked up our apartment keys. In the months that preceded the trip, we were also responsible for getting to know who would be our roommates, as well as finding a place to stay that we could all afford. There were three girls in all that I'd be staying with, and they were all really nice and definitely made an effort to make me feel welcome, Though, I will admit it, it was a bit hard to get close to the group of performed friends. But, despite my slight alienation, it seemed that things were all going well and would work out. All of us were on a similar budget plan as well, and by that I mean none of us really had much money to spend, so we are all on the same page while searching for the cheapest and lowest rent apartment we could find. After several days of searching, we stumbled across an ad for an ancient apartment located above the Campo di Fleur, which I am hoping is the proper pronunciation. That was the prime location, and we couldn't believe that it was still available, no less listed for an unbelievably low price. This immediately set off alarm bells on my head. The place was just flat out enormous, yet the rent was cheaper for much smaller apartments in much less desirable parts of town. However, Reason never really wins in a group of young, excited women. They had already made up their minds, and if I would be staying with them, this was my only option. We each received our own set of keys as well as a map with walking directions. Because of its prime location, it didn't really take us long to get there. The combo was amazing during the daytime and filled with vibrant markets. Well, during the evening, it was lined with quite lively street performers. All of it was amazing and much to take in at our first uh, glimpse of it. All the apartments surrounding it looked to be so ancient, so ours didn't really stand out all that much. After circling it around three to four times, we finally noticed the number nailed to the front of, of the massive wooden door. This would be our home for the next three months. I thought with the keys for a moment until there was an audible click on the heavy old lock. The thick old door swung forward with a screech. We were then met with a long winding staircase. We all looked at one of each other and groaned. None of us had accounted for the fact that the building had been constructed before elevators were common. So, three sets of stairs, countless complaints later, and all four of us, with luggage in hand, stood outside our new front door. Once again, we reached for my set of keys, fought with the stubborn lock as usual, and as soon as the front door was opened, there was a stampede of young women trying to claim the best rooms. Being a three bedroom apartment, this meant the two of us would have to share. I personally didn't care, so I let the others battle it out. When the dust had settled, I found out that I would be sharing with a room called, with a girl called Stephanie. That was fine with me, Stephanie was nice enough and she was also very quiet. My ideal future roommate. Over the course of the rest of the day, we ran around exploring our new home. There were two bathrooms, a full kitchen, a living room with an ancient black and white TV. Once again, I began to feel uneasy. Just how was it that they were able to get all four of us such a low price? But before I could finish that thought, I was quickly interrupted by a loud squealing. My initial reaction was to panic, however, 
I soon leaned in and realized that the noise was from a excitement down at the under other end of the apartment near the front door. Apparently, there was another part of the flat that we had simply missed. I followed the noise until, well, I reached a long dark hallway at the end. There at the end, behind the group of the squealing woman, was a washing and drying machine. For those of you thinking, what's the big deal, I should explain that these things are incredibly rare in Rome. Generally, exchange students would have to wash their clothes by hand in the sink and then hanging them up to dry. What was the luxury item of this doing in such a cheap apartment? Again, it raised bells, but <laughs> there's nothing really I could do at this point. Just as the screaming quelled, it picked right back up again as soon as the girls noticed the door adjacent to the washing machine. Beyond that door was the master bedroom. It had a balcony with a clawfoot tub pool. <laughs> and even a bite it. The girls immediately started fighting over who this bathroom was going to be. I, I didn't really see why we couldn't just share, but apparently the others were dead set on having ownership. As it turned out, it ended up being my bathroom. Stephanie had made a logical argument that because she and I had to share a bedroom while the other girls got their own room, it was only fair that she got to share the master bath. And I'll admit <laughs> that at first I was actually kind of excited. After all, it was a really nice room, however. <sighs> Over the course of the ne next several weeks, I began to grow more and more wary of the room. I, I don't know how to put it into words, it's just like, every time I went in that room, I, I felt like someone's eyes was on me. A very voyeuristic element that wasn't, well, really what I had me so unnerved. I, I, I felt that I was being, what was watching me was rather angry, that it didn't want me there and had the intention to hurt me. I begun doing everything in my power to avoid that room. I asked Alicia if she wouldn't mind if I used her restroom occasionally. I made up the lame excuse about how it was far more convenient since her room was so close while my bathroom was at the other end of the flat at the end of a very long, dark, and <coughs> creepy old looking hallway. She would happily agree though when I told her that she could use my bathroom anytime she liked. This worked for a while. For about the first two months of my trip, I was able to completely avoid the eerie, creepy, damning room. It wasn't until the final months that everything began to unveil and unravel. One night, as I prepared to brush my teeth, I found that Alicia was already occupying her bathroom. I could hear giggles coming from down the hallway, and it was clear that Stephanie, our other roommate, was both getting ready for bed in the master bath. So I decided that, well, since there's strength in numbers, I guess it would be alright for tonight. So I made my way down to the large bathroom where I joined the, um, boisterous girls brushing their teeth. And, well, I brushed my teeth too. They were amidst a conversation when Lindsay, our other roommate, had broken into such a furious fit of laughter that she had to lean over the wall for support. And then she suddenly jumped upright as if she had been shocked. We all looked at what had been the cause of her reaction, and then there on the wall, about the same level as a bathtub, was a tiny little door that no one, none of us had noticed before. It was the same color as the walls, and the landlord had even painted over it. Naturally, this made me a bit more nervous and made me think that that voyeur, well, feeling, was real. Whatever it was, the landlord clearly didn't want anyone opening it. But, as usual, throwing all caution into the wind, Lindsay reached for the handle and begun tugging at it with all her might. Stephanie, well, clucked her tongue in disapproval while pulling out a small pocket knife. She begun, well, decisively carving along the stem of the door. I wanted to beg her to stop, but... I really didn't have the energy to argue that night. I was rather shy, as you could probably tell. But, yeah, I, I just didn't really want to go against a large group of girls. So, within a few minutes, Lindsay had yanked the little door open with a loud crack. It was a crawl space. Fairly large. My, I mean, I guess it would have been is that you could fit at least three or four people in there. I was rather curious to why a landlord would have sealed up and empty, spacious room such as this, 
Well, I thought about this. Stephanie and Lindsay begun, well, calling for Alicia to see their new discovery. She was just as excited as they were when they first discovered it. However, as to be expected, this excellent, well, this excitement waned over time, and eventually the crawl space just turned into a storage area for a few towels and laundry baskets. In the following days after the unsealing of the crawl space, things went from eerie to downright terrifying. Annoyingly, Alicia changed her nightly routine so that I could no longer use her bathroom in the evenings. Once again, I was back to the large bathroom. All the while, the feeling that I was being watched was growing worse and worse. That I, I began to be feel paranoid each time I went into that room, and every time I would go in there, I would literally jump at the slightest noise of pipes settling, and like even like a little tap like that, I, I would just freaking... <laughs> go into a nervous fit. And as soon as I was finished, I would run at full speed down the hallway and close the door behind me. For some reason, I seemed to be the only one feeling this way. It's not like I could have told the other- It's not like I could have told the other girls either. I, I was already enough of an outcast as it was, so I simply kept to myself and hope it would go away eventually. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. One night, I was getting ready for bed, and I found myself alone in the bathroom. As I stood in front of the mirror, brushing my teeth, something set off the hairs on the back of my neck and made them go straight up. There's a faint rustling noise. Not like the kind that could have been caused by one of my roommates or at the other end of the flat, like noises that would have been, well, had it been quite loud to reach me all the way at the end of the hallway. No, 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 this noise was very faint. The sound of somebody gingerly sh uh, shuffling things around. I completely sit silent, terrifying, terror just filling me up. The soft rustling noise is coming from inside a goddamn crawl space. I turned on my heels and simply ran down the hallway to grab the attention of my roommates. I, I, I tried to explain to them what happened, but all that came out were in incoherent murmurs, somewhat like what I'm doing now. Eventually, I managed to stutter. S -s something, something is inside the crawl space. I, I blurted out in, in, with immense fear. They looked at me with confusion in their eyes, and as a pack, we moved together and down the hallway into the bathroom. I nearly fainted when I saw the door fully hanging ajar. Though this, this, this discovery filled me with absolute terror, Alicia immediately pointed out the balcony sliding door. Stephanie had left it open to air out the bathroom after having taken a shower a few hours ago. She peeked her head out the door and pointed that the slanted rooftop was adjacent to ours, and there were pigeons that occupied a nest with few birds. The girls summarized that a pigeon must have found its way in and was simply causing a disturbance. They all had a good laugh at my expense as we made our way back to the living room. I, I pretended to shake it off, but in my heart, no, 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 in, it, it, every fiber in my being knew that a pigeon had not caused that rustling noise. First off, the tiny door had been shut all day. None of us really cared to leave it open because it smelled quite musty and dank and dead inside. And secondly, the door had been shut when I left the bathroom. I am certain of this, yet it was wide open when I returned. You're not going to tell me that there's a goddamn pigeon who knows how to open a door and then close it by itself. It was at this point I began to suspect that something was terribly wrong with this apartment. When I got back to my room, I pulled out my laptop and called my best friend via Skype. She had always been skeptical, a skeptical method, Methodist type. However, she kept an open mind towards things that were hard to explain, so I decided that out of anyone, she was probably the best one to help calm my nerves and maybe explain something to me. As I expected, she initially was quite doubtful, though she had also agreed that a pigeon was quite unlikely to be the source, and she asked me if I had any photos of the crawl space. She said that if she could see it, that it would help her understand a little bit more clearly and possibly help her come up with a more logical explanation. Relieved at her willingness to at least, at, at least hear me out unlike the others, I reached for my camera and made my way back to the eerie hallway. 
I arrived and found, well, to my relief that the door was still closed. I stood in front of it for a moment, gathering my nerves and my strengths before pulling the little door open. Despite the clutter left by my roommates, it was nearly empty. I snapped a quick photo before closing the door and running back to my room. I immediately plugged in the camera into my computer and uploaded a photo and opened the image. I was petrified by what I saw. There was at the upper right corner. There was a face. There was a goddamn face with baring its teeth at me. My whole body was violently shaking. Dear God, that thing was in our home. I muttered to myself. Fear began to overtake me. Someone had sealed whatever that thing was inside of that cross space. And unknowingly, we just let it out. I was so absorbed in my panic, I didn't even notice when my roommate had returned. She was so blissfully unaware of the imminent danger we were in. Yet, even if I tried to warn her, she would certainly not believe me. I was at a loss of what to do, and I finally decided that I would deal with it in the morning, though not by a large amount. I did feel braver in the sunlight. From there on, I attempted to sleep, though. For the first time ever since being there, I, I, closed a bolted, I closed and bolted my door shut while getting into bed. Stephanie eyed me suspiciously while doing so, so I jokingly said that Lindsay had been sneaking in my room the previous nights and had been stealing my Nutella. She laughed heartily and, shaking her head, she settled down for the night. I will admit that the only reason why I was able to find any sleep that night was because of her presence. Something that being alone would... Something being alone would not be able to give me a sense of false security. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning when a sound awoken me. I'd always been a light sleeper, so the faintest noise was enough to stir me up. It sounded like the door being pushed open at the other end of the flat, followed by footsteps. These weren't normal footsteps. They were, they were far too fast. It sounded like someone was running down at full speed from the foyer to the living room, all about the apartment. But they weren't heavy footsteps like the kind you would expect it from a running person. These were very light, almost unnaturally so. My initial reaction was to assume either Alicia or Lindsay had gotten up and, well, I stuck my ear to the wall behind me, the one that separated me from Lindsay's room. I could hear a faint but steady breathing. She was clearly asleep. It, it wasn't her. I then crossed over to the other side of the door, and once again, I stuck my ear to the wall. Alicia's snoring was quite auditable, and there was no way it was her. I slowly began to grow fearful as I turned to the last, well, resort to see if Stephanie had perhaps gotten up, but I could quite plainly see her resting silently up and down. A shiver went down my spine and I nearly screamed when I realized what the footsteps had just come to right outside my door. Despite the lights being out, I could clearly see a looming dark shadow form through the tiny crack at the foot of my door. I dared not move. Whatever it was, it was just standing there, waiting. Then, to my horror, the doorknob began to jiggle and jump at first, and then it started growing more violent at the realization of it being not locked. The noise eventually woke up my roommate. She sat up, looking in confusion. The instant the light, the jiggling of the doorknob stopped, she asked me what in the hell I was doing and if I knew what time it was. I told her it wasn't me, and I told her whatever I had tried to open the door was a thing for the cross space from the previous day, and it had come back. But she simply frowned her brow at me and told me that I need to get more sleep. The next day, I made an appointment with my program supervisor and I told him that I needed to go home. He tried to tell me that I was just homesick and it would pass, but I insisted and he eventually gave, well, gave up and let me call my parents. They were confused, but understanding. They were able to change the date of my return flight to the following morning. I really wanted to get out of there that day, but understandably, that was the soonest they could manage. Unfortunately, this meant I would have to stay one more dreadful night in that horrible apartment. When I returned, I tried to tell the others what was going on. I knew it would be fruitless, but I knew I was getting out of danger, but they weren't. But I was immensely worried for their safety, but none of them took me seriously. They looked at me as if I was some sort of mad woman. They didn't say anything, but I was sure they all thought it as some sort of mental breakdown. At that point, there was nothing I could, could do to convince them. So I 
So at that night, I locked my door, hesitantly went to bed, and right on cue, once again, around 3 o'clock in the morning, I was awoken up by rapid footsteps scampering around the apartment. I could hear the bathroom begin to creak open. And, followed by my door at the end of the hallway, the footsteps grew louder and louder through the apartment. And finally, once more, it came to pause right outside my door. I could hear the breathing outside, slowly and heavily. I began to panic. And to my horror, I saw that Stephanie had forgotten to lock the door behind her after getting out of the restroom. It was right outside my door, and I didn't know if I had time to jump up and try to lock it before that thing realized that there was nothing blocking its way. I hesitated for a moment too long, and by the time I had sat up straight in my bed, the handle slowly began to turn. I froze in terror as the door creaked open, revealing my tormentor. It stood there ominously in the doorway, staring down at me. Its eyes protruded slightly from its skull, giving off a very faint, but light, uh, tint. It didn't appear to have a nose. Only stilts where the nostrils should have been. It had teeth like that of a man, but it had no lips, giving the impression it was a internally toothy snarl. Its grayish-white skin was waxy and stretched tight over its bony face. The rest of its skeletal form was hard to make out, but it was almost entirely wrapped in shadows. After pushing for a moment at the doorway, it began to slowly head towards me. As it moved, its body let out snickering, sickening cracks. I sat there, petrified, still my fear took hold of me at the foot of its bed. Its heavy breaths were deafeningly loud. I don't know how Stephanie slept through it. The air began to so smell sour and stagnant. With a frightening speed, it jolted to the other end of the bed, mere feet from me. I gagged from the smell of it. It smelled like sulfur and rotting flesh. Slowly, it unfurled one of its large, gnarly hands and proceeded to reach for me. Not until several inches away from mine. Finally, I found my voice. I screamed as loud as I possibly could, and it halted in its tracks. And Stephanie shot up from his bed, visibly frightened. The creature hunched over on all fours of the room and fucking started moving out at an unsettling speed like that of a spider. A moment later, Stephanie switched the light on and looked at me furiously. She demanded to know what the fuss was about. And I told her exactly what happened. I was no liar. But she still called me a fucking nutcase. The taxi came to pick me up next morning. The sun had not even risen, and by the time it arrived, none of the girls came to see me off. But I expected this. After losing my luggage into the truck, I, I climbed into the back of the old clab cab, and I had driven right down the square. As I was setting the base of my apartment, I leaned back and looked out the, I looked out the window. I could see where my room had been. My face, con my face contorted to a mixture of panic and concern, but... There, looking at my old window, the creature and its unblinking eyes bore, <laughs> bore into me, his unfucking lipsless mouth curled into a smiling grin. Before I could say anything, the cab driver had taken off, leaving that hell house far behind. I tried to warn them. I honestly really tried. But I did everything in my part to warn them of the danger that they were in, but none of them would listen to me. There was no way I could have stopped what happened after I returned home. You see, several weeks after returning to the United States, I received a phone call from the program director, and he informed me that the day after the program ended, all three of my past roommates had been reporting miss it, been missing. The authorities had no idea how long they actually had been gone for, as they were only recently discovered to be missing. When the program director went to go check on them after none of them made it to the program wrap-up meeting, they assumed it had been for at least a week or two. Since all food in the apartment was expired, there was no sign of forced entry, and no valuables were missing either. The only notable detail mentioned in the report when they arrived at the scene was a strange little door hanging a jar in the bathroom. And when they approached it, they were met with a powerful odor, but no visible source. The official report has them declared as missing, but I know they're all dead or worse. <sighs> I know I'm incredibly lucky to make it out of my life, and I think the only reason why I'm still alive today is because I fled thousands of miles across the ocean despite their unwillingness to listen. 
I still feel a unimaginable amount of guilt about what happened to those poor girls. That's why I'm telling you this now. I may not be able to get back in time to save them, and but maybe I could maybe I could prevent this from happening to you. Please, please heed my warning. If you ever get the opportunity to study abroad, keep in mind, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And whatever you do, don't stay on the third floor of an ancient yellow building complex above the Campo di Flore. There's something there. Something evil.